<laughs> hiya, John. Hello, hiya. Sorry, I'm a bit late. No one, and it's all. Is it seven to it? Yeah. Well, we might as well. I mean, we haven't really got a plan. It was just, uh, you know. Two people missing. Are they coming on? Are they? Uh, uh, are we going to taste them and then you're going to tell us? Are we going to taste all of them first and then are you going to tell us what they all are? Well, it's up or to you, Becca, because gonna... I think you're the only one that's actually still doing it blind, you and Ollie. Oh. So nope. we can... we're, we don't blind. Know. we're blind. I've kept someone blind share well. it to the group? Yeah, I don't know which is which. So it ended up not being so blind. Well, it's up to whoever's still in it blind. John, Carl, Becca, um, do you want to reveal after each dram? I'd say, say reveal after each dram. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that. Well, does everyone know what the charity does? <laughs> Am I just behind the behind the curve? I'll, I'll tell you in just one second. Oh, but missing Andy McKeague. McKeague, <laughs> is that how you say his name? David yeah. McKell Home. No, he's on uh, call. That's why he's not on. Yeah. And Tony McCourt. I think Andy is he's drunk as already because he was asking what. No, hey. that's Tony. All right, so we'll he'll probably not be on them. So, well, before those guys join, um, Dan, in terms of uh, men's pie club, men's they, pie. Oh, sorry, I, I, Joanne, were you going to give a an? Um, it is. Or they've got different venues where they meet up once a week as a, a formal meeting. Um, a lot of the guys meet up and do other things like walk and football and things like that. But predominantly, they meet up to make pies for to help with everything from social isolation, suicide prevention, food poverty. Um, some guys just come along because they want to make pie and that meal will last them because they're a bit down on the look a little bit, so to speak. They're in slightly, some of the venues are in slightly more deprived areas. Um, there's not a lot going on for people so it's just a place just for men to go meet up have a chat with other guys let off a bit do you know, of steam. Do you know what some of the venues are locally then pardon do you know what some of the venues are locally yeah there's one in chopwell there's one in high span um there's potentially going to be a, a, where where are you near john mushroom i don't know sorry full time i'm in throckley <laughs> all right um I'm not sure where there's one close over mm. there. I think there's one in Gateshead, which is over the water. There's potentially going to be a one in Jarrow, which Karen... So in terms from. of the guys that are, are, are further afield, Men's Pie Club started in the northeast, mm -hmm. and they're, yeah. they're starting to open up um, similar things in Leeds. Uh, I think they were looking at a place in Manchester, if I remember rightly, uh, 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 as well. So they, they are mm -hmm. looking to expand, but it started in the northeast. And the and the biggest thing that they're wanting to do is is just try to to sort of provide some degree of support to basically men, because uh, particularly the northeast uh, had the highest rate of suicides for men uh, in the whole of the UK. And that's what they why they originally started to kind of try and see if they could tackle some of that uh, horrendous. And the pies are amazing. Yeah, yeah and the They're pies. really okay. good. But what was really good was at the festival. Um, I'm rubbish with names. The guy from Glen Murray, Glen Murray. Oh, Gary. His name? Zach. His parents oh. have offered a venue in a snooker hall for men's pie club to use for free. So little things like that happened in the background of the festival. Um, and I don't know anything will come of it, but like there's a sort of few people there from Greg's. So we had men's pie club meet the pie people, which was very good. <laughs> so hopefully something might come from that. I mean, there's there's other kind of things from men that get a bit more publicity. Um, like when I first read about it, it reminds of um, Andy's Man Club. Yes, there's a big the one, um, one, yeah. But yeah, but I think a, a man's club where you get it also make pie wins wins for me. So well, they tried it needs to make more, it so needs that, more publicity. I think they um, tried to make it so that they had something to take home to eat <clears throat> yeah. rather than. I'd, I'd, I mean, I'd not heard of it before before you mentioned it. 
Yeah, Chris was saying that it, not only is it like an, a social a social event for them, but for some of them that the pie that they're making is going to be their meal for the next two days. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I, I think you know, I, I mean, I was blown away by just how great the the and it's it's a small lo, you know, it's relatively local, obviously, to the northeast. But it just felt like it was an ideal match for the festival when uh, when it was suggested. I think it was uh, John and Joanne that suggested it in the first place, and I just thought it was spot on. So next year's uh, festival charity will be um, working with Tim. In fact, it will be the Cat and Dog Shelter. Uh, so you know, again, a great uh, charity. But anyway, we're on to this one tonight, um, and uh, we raised a cracking amount for Men's Pie Club actually already. And this is just, you know, icing on the cake. It's just great that, 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 you know, that you guys have spent so much time and everybody has contributed as well. Do you know, do you know how much the to running total currently is? I'm, I'm going to, I can tell you, down to the penny, if you give me two seconds. So far, because it might be more by the end of the night, because I'm going to con some of you lovely folk out of a little bit more money. Yeah, obviously what, what some of you don't know is that... Uh, all the, the drums that you're going to taste are like one to six. We've actually got four bottles of each. So we were going to have like a little impromptu auction Oops. at the end for each bottle. Providing you like the whiskies, that is. <laughs> we have got raised uh, £2,367 so far. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. That, that is absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Because the last time we was around 1,700. <laughs> That's amazing. That is, is that is absolutely stunning. I do think if they'd managed to make pies to bring on the day, you know, that would have been an absolute <laughs> bloody <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Whiskey I and pies. I would have loved to have sold more of these. Yeah. yeah, I think Chris Chris was unsure as to like numbers, and obviously making that amount of pies. Yeah, would have been quite a task for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, that's that's the reason it didn't go ahead. But I mean, yeah. they couldn't. So anyway, every, everybody's parched. Let's grab a, a whiskey at least. Yeah, in the number one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> other, the other reason, though, I think there was no. You start. I'm gonna finish this. Um, there was no pies on the night. There is obviously problem with uh, substance abuse. How can I put it? Mm -hmm. Um, within some of the members of Mine's Pie Club. Yeah. yeah. Um, or maybe maybe alcohol in the post. abuse. <laughs> So didn't want people coming along to the festival who might potentially be tempted to drink whiskey who maybe shouldn't be drinking whiskey. If you get me drift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah well, obviously none of us fall into that, that category. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I fall well into that, but I, you're happy to take my money. <laughs> 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 We went lot. to the free trade one night for a drink and they had a load of their pies on the counter and they weren't selling them per se, they were just asking for a donation. We bought a mushroom and chestnut pie <laughs> in red wine. And you know, you know, when you eat something when you come home and you're like, oh my God, I wish I'd bought like half a dozen of them. I only bought one thinking I don't really eat pie very much, but oh my God, it was bloody amazing. Well, it was definitely worth the final we got in for it. We only bought one as well. Mm -hmm. That's delicious, that jam. So it's it's definitely a space cider, isn't it? It's got to be, and it's it's clearly uh, pure bourbon. And it must be a refill cask because there's very little colour in it. I feel like we just shouldn't speak because I'm looking directly at the bottle. Well, yeah, we, we can't really have any input on it. It's just well, it's quite creamy. <laughs> There's me stating what I think is the <laughs> obvious, but I might be completely wrong. Please jump in if you. I would say the alcohol volume is not that high. Ooh, now I uh, suppose it's on a fresh palate. I. I was going to say at least around fifty. Oh. Did anybody go to the James Ed table at the festival? Yeah. Yes. I can't I remember what I tried, but I tried a couple. 
we, I, I made it to we made it to very few tables in the in the inside room in the in the room inside the bar got sidetracked gossiping with everyone and then <laughs> <laughs> we were very thorough at the tables we did go to. yeah we were yeah. <laughs> fair enough and bearing in mind we were there for the whole day yeah. as well <laughs> didn't actually make it around everywhere so yeah that's generally the case when I'll go to a festival I'll, I'll sort of I'll look who the exhibitors are and I'll, I'll pick out who I want to visit mm. but I'll, I mean, I might have maybe a well, if it's a long list, if it's a big festival, I might have maybe 10, 10 tables. Because generally it's the Indies. If I go to Glasgow, then it's nearly always the Indies anyway, even though all the others are there as well. But even then, you, you go to a table and you might know the lad who's behind the table and you start chatting. And then before you know it, you spent half an hour of a three-hour festival at one table. Yeah. So you, you don't make it anyway. <clears throat> Well, to be fair, that that's why I, um, I am going to probably go with this idea of doing a Friday session uh, next year and, mm -hmm. and then more for me, the more you have one it. or two sessions on the Saturday so that people can actually go to, to, to two sessions next year. Yeah, as long as you do, when you do the ticketing, it, it has to be the, the Friday and the, one of the Saturdays, not both of the Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, mm -hmm. I, on the ticketing platform, I can set up a ticket price for like and then make sure that it it does it does stipulate the morning session or evening session on the saturday with the yeah price. i've actually done that before you know with the the newcastle one when they used to do um the whiskey lounge one they used to do yeah. that on a friday and a saturday and i've done a friday and a saturday before yeah so i hope everybody agrees that that's worth uh doing i think steve does yeah. it as well actually yeah. it's Definitely. uh kendall don't you yeah, the first two years at Candle have done that Friday, Friday evening, Saturday afternoon. And that's not to mention the new the new union pub in between, Phil Walker's <laughs> pub in between. Yeah, but to be fair, Steve, you're going to be doing all three sessions anyway, aren't you? Yeah, quite happy to. <laughs> quite happy to, because as people have probably realised, it's just, you know, just an excuse to drink, but at a slower rate, volunteering. So <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised we haven't had more people jump on board. I so I'm eight, I'm eight, I'm eight sign up next year. <laughs> <laughs> At the Kendall one, does everybody make it there on the Saturday then? Or do you do you have a few casualties? No, I've, I've not known. There's probably only... I mean, we we recognise each other, obviously, because you're in on the Friday, you don't know who else is coming on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Then you start to mm -hmm. see people and you kind of give them a nudge and a thumbs up. So there's probably about a dozen of from different different parts of the world that do, have done it since the start. Uh, but I've not known anyone... Kendall's quite civilised. Um, I've not really known anyone struggle badly there. I think one of, one of the worst casualties I've ever seen hit Kendall was Mickey Plummer, and he was the exhibitor. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair to him, he was the main sponsor as well, and he did get there on yeah. a Saturday afternoon, but God knows how. <laughs> when we were, went to the Kendall one... We stayed like in a pub, but it like round the back of the pub, it had three rooms to outside. And about three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock, we heard like shouting and yelling, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And there was a guy just lying face down, like over the top of a plant pot with his face in the gravel. And before anybody says it, it wasn't me. Had, no, we had <laughs> we had to help his pal put him to bed, didn't we? Yeah. And we were like, come on, son, just go to bed. Like, it's three o'clock in the morning. We couldn't stop laughing, could we? Yeah, it was so awful. Yeah. Yeah. The guy sat outside of our room who was one of the exhibitors. Aye. And he was sat outside of our room on the floor and the paramedics were like, really Trying sorry, to... love, will you just go back to bed? You know, and you know, I was foaming. <laughs> I was like, we've been awake twice already where people are bloody pissed out in the sudden heads. <laughs> yeah, so no, no, no one got really uh, overly done in uh, Kendall at all. <laughs> but by the sounds of it, largely the exhibitors. Yes. <laughs> I was probably still in the new union, so I didn't see any of that. <laughs> uh, Anybody right. got any thoughts about John? <laughs> I, I, I could taste quite a soapy finish on it, but then I've realised that my glass has still got soap in it. I thought I'd better just switch glasses and then I've realised that it is uh, lemon fairy. 
<laughs> mm, mm, a bouquet of lemon fairy. Don't let that stop you from bidding on the bottle. <laughs> you know, Dan, I the the final taste that I can taste on it is lemon peel. So you're not far off with your lemon fairy. Mm. <laughs> so I definitely got I definitely got a little bit of smoke, tiny bit. I did I yeah. did write down what they officially said. I started and then Carl said, oh, it doesn't matter because Leon's coming on. So I just sacked it. So I did do the first bottle. So officially it says the nose, raisins, grassy and walnuts. The palate, <laughs> um, chocolate, red berries, brown sugar and peat smoke. And the finish, apricot and pear. That is the official official line. I can't and believe I can't believe that John and Joanne would put a PT number as number one. I mean, there's a reason. Oh, there's a reason. Yes, and you would have done the same. Oh, okay. so shall we do the reveal now? Is that? Sorry, John. Finished chewing over it. Should we do the reveal? Yeah, yeah. you can reveal. Yeah, go on. Is it not more? No. Oh, the blend. Oh, blended one. <laughs> right. How strong why is it, uh, John? Sorry? How strong is it? It is. Is it working? 50, isn't it? Yeah. Ollie's currently panicking because our TV won't switch on. So he's like, how am I going to watch the rugby? <laughs> 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 you might have to stream it, Ollie. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. The, it, we, we might need to turn it on very soon as well. Yeah, I, I don't have an area so I'm streaming, so I've got about a 10 second delay. So no reactions for about 10 seconds, please. <laughs> it's 45.6%. Yeah, 45.6%. That is lower than it. I, I certainly felt like it was 50. So obviously that's why we started with that one. Right. I'll just give some clarity. So there's, a, there's a little hint that everything coming after this is definitely above that. Ooh, <laughs> that's what we like to see. Well, I did actually mention in the initial post that, uh, well, I named the first round. Whoa. Because all, all the others, that was the only one that's not a single cast. Right. So I named that one. Uh, yeah. But like like I say, the, the other five are all single cast. Does it tell you what's in the blend? Uh, no. no. Oh. You might be able to find out on James Eady's website, but probably yeah, not. Yeah, they do a little, they do a little card that they give out at their tastings, and they've tried to recreate an old recipe. So you'll definitely mm. find find out on the website. Yeah, he he did explain it all. It was on the night, but I forgot if I can remember a thing about it. <laughs> I'm just seeing if I can find it. So it's Mark X. Let's have a look. See if. Uh... Sorry, Carla. When you said Leon was coming, I just sat there. Yeah, no, no. And just, just so you know, um, it's all very informal, Joe. We're just here for a bit of crap. Yeah, yeah. And no, some but... of the James E D guys were were wanting to be on here, and Leon uh, from James E D wanted to be here as well, and he was planning to be here. Um, I'll just finish this. Thanks, Joe. Because of the storm, he ended up being really late getting into his house. He just not long arrived before we started. And he said, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna duck out because I'm knackered and I've been travelling all day trying to get home uh, no. because of the storm." So not surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm actually here today because we, I, I was down in Southampton on Thursday and then flew back yesterday. All right. And that was a treacherous flight and a half. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Well, yeah. lucky you didn't uh, skid off the runway like we've seen uh, on another flight, haven't we? Yeah. Why are you doing that? So, um. Apparently, this is a, a, a it features 14 of the 16 wh whiskies. Sorry, so there's 16 whiskies in trademark X, trademark X. So there's 16 different. I presume they're all malt. Is it a, is it a, a blended malt? No. All right. So there's, so there's definitely grain in them. Okay. Okay. Right. Anyway, that that's that one. Some of them I did really struggle to find. And then I was looking at whiskey base, which is obviously just other people's interpretation. So number two. God, the nose on this number two is incredible, isn't it? Oh, it is. Oh, boy. God. I like this nose. Mm. That is beautiful. 
can't, uh, that one, I can't find a single thing about it at all. Hmm? Now, but this is reminding that... me of grains, like an older grain. The nose, anyway. What's the Italian uh, Christmas cake? You know, the ones that send little. Panettone. Stolen. Yeah, Stolen. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, panettone. Panettone. Yeah. For me, it's like icing sugar and panettone. Oh, I like the smell of panettone. That soft cake and icing sugar. It is, and that is actually that is it. That is beautiful. That's a lovely nose. But I, I'm I'm guessing that just from the nose, that is a grain. Is that that bottle there? I like being shot down. This <laughs> one. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not to be sure fair, Carl, you went wrong with the first one because there will be some space aid in it. Yeah, it is. Look at the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that like saying even a stop clock is right twice a day? Yeah. <laughs> How old do you think this grain is, Carl? I don't think that's grain. Eight, three, two. Uh, on the nose, I think this is a grain. I, I would have said it's it's at least a twenty year older. You know, like that kind of. I'm about to change my mind as soon as I try it. Hmm. Mm. Now I'm not so sure. That's actually a bit lemony as well. You know when you're a kid and you've got six or seven different flavours of chewets and you jam them all in your mouth at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what that tastes like. Skittles, we would have been behind you there, but... Yeah. The yeah no, none of us are that old. Do you oh, remember? Well, true, true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Opal fruits was their second name, and there were Spangles first. There weren't Spangles, were there? No. Yeah, not that I remember Spangles, but I do know lots of people have talked about it. That's not a red rock. Proper sweet on their own. Yeah, sounds like a red rock pub in Newcastle. What? What? What on earth are Spangles? <laughs> what the? Seemingly, they were the original name for Opal Fruits, but now you're making me all doubt myself. I'm going yeah. to Google it. Well, now they're Starburst. Yeah, they now are. it's Starburst because they used to be Opal Fruits. I've never heard this yeah. Bangles Malawi. Bangles used to be like a boiled sweet and they were square. Yeah. Sorry, I'm probably, I am old enough to remember these. <laughs> <laughs> so they were a square boiled sweet with like a dimple in the middle of it, all different fruit flavours. They were Spangles. Ah, there. I haven't seen a Spangle for a long time. 1950s to the 1980s, seemingly though. So they were no. out in the 1980s, but I don't remember them. I remember them, John. Glad somebody else does. Yeah, I remember <laughs> them. I remember having a spangle or two. Right. Yeah, that's it, Steve. Right? I can't find it. Here's the book, Fizzy too. Fizzy. That's all I've got for that yeah. one. Steve's sharing the picture. Come on, England. <laughs> it's just kicked off. Just saying. I don't like that. Um, this is one of the hand. Hang your car, is that what you're saying? It. Got, it says, got me towel, got me spangles, like as if to a couple of them at the beach. <laughs> Not got me towel, got me wine. Anyway, we're going to bring this back on track here oh. now that we're finished with the other <laughs> We're not ignoring you as we're just trying to find out a little bit about the bottles. That's all right. You'll crack on. Just carry on without us. Anybody else Shall want to give in their two penneth on what they think it is? Because I'm still I'm still of the opinion that this might be a grain. I'm all, I'm always just hanging on for uh, back at station North Street. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm really bad at picking what it is. Ollie's better. You're better at that. Mm. Uh, certainly, having the things that we've tasted before, isn't it? I'm quite good at. It. I don't think so it's I an think old. It's I don't nose. think it's old. No, but on the nose, it's sort of like it is. It is really creamy, isn't it? Like creamy, almost bordering on fudge, vanilla, all those cake, like you said, fairy, like not fairy cakes, 
kind of tony and stuff but there's a real sweetness behind it as well like um ollie said it was like dates like medjool dates mm. but on the palette you know it's not as sweet on the palette i get this overriding like you said, it's a lemon peel isn't it at the end again yeah i think that's quite lemony mm. Mm. I think both of them had a fair bit of tannin from the from the like the wood is quite astringent and I don't know whether that's the way they manage their wood but it's mind you the blend's not going to be is it because it's eighteen components yeah. but to me I can really feel the wood in the back in the background. But is that not because I might be right that it might be an older <clears throat> grain and the wood influence is bigger than you think it is? Yeah, it's like a little bit grassy as well on the end. After the lemon. You don't tend to get grassy notes on a grain, though, do you? I don't think it's a grain. Mm, well, that might be why I'm completely and utterly frigging wrong. <laughs> I don't drink enough grains to be like, this is a grain. So. I don't know if you want to keep that little bit there. To come oh, actually, no. Oh, we've got three points. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie's doing really well at like keeping a you know a straight Poker face. face, Poker Sorry, face. Peter. <laughs> he's, he's not even he's not even taking it yet for me. <laughs> so he's still walking up doing his routine. <laughs> Sorry. Tim, you're gonna order that fiver, mate. I hope so. I really hope <laughs> that. I'll gladly it. give you that. So so Tim can't what? really lose. Well, you can't even lose a fiver. Out. No, but he, <laughs> even then, he'd be happy to part with a fiver for it for for a win. I would be. I've got a really small amount in glass, like it's literally like a little dribble there. Yeah. And um, it now smells more fruity, like a bit a bit like pineapple, like spangles. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and find you a packet of spangles so you can taste them and use it as a, a taste. Yeah, but they they probably won't smell very nice. <laughs> Would anyone Maybe like the it. official line for the tastings for that? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so the nose is tropical fruit, papaya, mango, strawberries, and cream. The palate, it says hotter and spicier. Vanilla biscuits, apricot jam, and nutmeg. And the finish has tannins, and it is 59.1%. Oh, I didn't think it tasted that, like it was that, that big. That did not guys. taste that big. No. It does not, does it? That is all I've got. Oh, do we know what it is? Oh, yeah. We do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody but else want to put it in? Yes. <laughs> Before the reveal, anybody, anybody want to put their head above the pulpit? Well, the pulpit. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Lovely. <laughs> Any no. guesses in the region? I haven't got a Scooby. I'm shit at that. No, I've got a clue. Glen Elgin. Oh, <laughs> oh <Alex>. <laughs> <laughs> What was it finished in? Oh, uh, Madeira. My rules. Ah. Ah. Okay. Hence the tropical fruits and pineapple. So the finish is... Uh, Does it say on it? First fill dual hogshead. Uh, European oak finished for 19 months. Wow. Does that actually say it on the bottle and I'm Googling every bottle? No, no it's nice. Pissed. All right. It just tells you where the finish is, how long it was, and what it was in. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't find it. Like in that one. That. Did you like that one? Um. That's great on me. Yeah. I didn't like okay. it. Okay. And it was amazing. All right. Might have to bid on that one. <laughs> did so Did we... everybody hear what we said earlier about selling the bottles after? Yeah, I did announce it. All right, okay. Sorry, I wasn't. I was a once a new link was opened, I, I said that we'd have a yeah impromptu auction at the end. Right, so should we go on into number three whenever you're ready? Come on. Oh, so what I know about that is totally incorrect. Then. Mel's warm and biscuity. I can't find anything about this bottle at all. So when we do the reveal, you might have to just look for yourself. That's what a sort of horse we are. 
sort yourself out. It's like when you come around for your tea, you just got to make it yourself. <laughs> That's not true, Joanne. No, no one goes Even in my kitchen. Even No, you're not allowed in the kitchen. I'd let you hoover up, though. My brother said the house looked homely today. He oh. meant pigsty. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, you're probably right there. I just can't find anything for that one at all. So every time I look, it's like the wrong year or... They're all sold out. I feel a little bit biscuity on the palette, but more oh, on the nose. The third one now. Yeah. Oh, I like creamy one? biscuity. Not like custard creams, but like creamy biscuit. That's really hard yeah, to just... No, it's not... Yeah, yeah, that's what it because I found that one, but with a different ABV. But I don't know if they've done two versions of each. Do you think, like, as a distillery, they might like do two versions of each, like a, well, a cast do a strength and a and a, a vat? Yeah, they often yeah. do that. Often the the single so casks are black I mean, labels, bigger... and the vatens mm -hmm. are not are kind of paler coloured. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a small back there, like uh, white, and they've normally got like uh, some sort of pictorial image on it, like a sort of animal. Often, probably. Yeah, they're often named after pubs. Yeah. I just don't want to give you wrong information. This is this has got to be young and and pretty high up there. Yeah. ABV wise, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the alcohol yeah. volume is definitely higher. What did you say the last one was, John? Though was the last one fifty point something? Fifty nine. Fifty nine point one. Shit, hell. It can't be higher than that. I think it's on a par. But maybe it's just because it's young. Younger, yeah. I'll be very surprised if this is more than ten year old, which means that it's going to be twenty two fucking years old. The other one was eleven year old. I'm lost off with what's been said and what hasn't because I wasn't listening. About what? <laughs> that was funny one. It's yeah. it's either young or old. It's either a malt or a grain. <laughs> it's from somewhere in Scotland, maybe. <laughs> young malt. Down Fino Scotland, finish. I think it's a Fino or something that's got that yeah. kind of. Uh... There's a there's a big finish on it. No, doesn't like that either. Oh, I quite like it, but it's it's kind of I, I can't get away from biscuits. Um, I think my problem is I'm drinking a little bit of ginger wine. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's uh, it's probably it's not the best thing to drink. Then. Well, that's quite a strong flavour, mm. really, wasn't it? And it is a flavour. Yeah, don't, Joe, I don't think ginger wine is a regulation palate cleanser, to be honest. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just fancied it. That's like having ginger biscuits instead of oat cakes as a palate cleanser. Mm. I probably should stop drinking that then. It is nice though, because when it uh, was like cold the other day, I was like, it's ginger wine time. The ginger wine is nice. All right. Well, I actually quite like that. I quite like that three. Mm -hmm. It's it's spiky. Yes, it's, uh, you know, it's a bit in your face, but actually it's got a fair bit of uh, heat to it, which I quite like sometimes. Is uh, that the correct EVV? No. Well, I have to say that I'm not, I'm not keen on this one. No, it's not. No. Yeah, it's definitely not for everyone. Ollie well, says that there's like a little bit of barnyard on it. I see what you mean. It's like a hay, <laughs> like a when um, Lorraine said biscuity, it's like hay as well, <laughs> like real cereals on the nose. Close Usually, I get that bit, <laughs> the biscuit. You know, I normally get it from stuff that's more peated, and obviously, it's not peated. So I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it is more like hay. It reminds me of the Glen Murray um, hand fills. Oh. There is like a sweetness in the background. I just can't figure out what it is. Are you a we fan had... of the hand fills, though, Dan? Sorry. So we good. had one of, I don't know who gave it to us, one of the Glen Murray hand fills yesterday, which was the Tokai wine one. Or oh, was it any good? Oh, I absolutely loved it. John didn't like it. Not for me. It was delicious, but it had a little bit of that farmyard funk going on. Oh, it was lovely, really nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we tried it with 
with the Tokai wine as well, but the wine was dry and so was the whiskey. But I think there's a sweet Tokai as well. There mm. is. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying that one. But I mean, they do, me, they do like oh. a dry white in a normal kind of wine bottle, and then they do like the sauternes kind of one. So when right, we were right. looking in the shop, I was saying the one well, I think it's the sauternes that it's likely to be that they would put the whiskey barrels yeah. in. So we we got the bottle that was the sauternes, but, but there's quite a big price quite quite difference in them as well. Massive. Well, it was nine pound more for the other one, the other bottle of wine. And that was already 16 quid. And I was like, we don't even know if we like it. Yeah. yeah. And actually, we don't. Yeah, yeah. But it's like um, port, like a port finish or port maturation. Right. If it's got a ruby port, I don't mind it because it tends to be sweeter. Uh, and Tawny tends to be like a drier. Mm -hmm. So it ends up with like a dry finish on it, which I ju it's just not right for my palate. Well, I tell you, that Tokai sounds like it's right up our street. So, well, I don't know. I didn't like the Fib Tokai. Oh, I didn't like it either, Lorraine. Was it, was it, that last it, night? it was either the Fib or the. Um, no, it wasn't Rage, Fib. It was, uh, was Fragrant Drops. Fragrant Drops, I think. Yeah. yeah, we tried them both. Yeah. We had a little sample of that. I think Steve gave it to us, actually. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fabulous drop. I bought two bottles. Yeah. For the yeah, yeah it's how everyone's palate is just different. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Yeah. It was full maturation as well, the fragrant yeah, drops was. was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I didn't like either of them. The, the fragrant drops was something like 14 years, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Would anybody like to... We know absolutely nothing apart from what it says on the bottle. I mean, we can, find, we can find similar bottles that have, that have been matured or had a similar sort of finish. I can tell you that it's it was finished for 11 months. Yeah. Label. I, I would tend to go with what Dan said. It might be a fino, because uh, I think it's quite well. Actually, is it dry? It feels dry. I, yeah. in the palette. I think it's dry, as in like not not tannic dry, not tannins dry, <laughs> but like as in it's not. If you're describing white wine, dry white versus yeah. a medium or a sweet white, it's dry in that sense. Not but that it is still sense. sweet as well, which kind mm. of goes a, a little bit against fino. Yeah, I mean, I I I put to nondescript dried fruits, but there's a lot of heat as well, like pepper yeah. and that sort of thing. It's probably the ABV. I actually watered mine down as well. I did the first time I tasted it. I did also get um, butyric acid. <laughs> if anyone how, knows, how often have you tried that? Well, <laughs> no. So <laughs> is, it, is that the old Brucladi uh, baby sick? <laughs> yep. Butyric acid, famously included in Hershey's chocolate. If you've ever had American Hershey's chocolate, their milk chocolate, mm -hmm. there's a taste in it that as Brits, we would not like not when chocolate. we would not, <laughs> yeah, we would not put up with because it is, yeah, this sort of like um, mm. off milk, nice. sort of almost like a bit like vomit thing sort of going on. But often I, in whiskies, I only get it on usually the first taste of the whiskey. And then after that, it's not usually there afterwards. Um, and then, yeah, again, like um, like the pith of lemon. It's not even like lemon peel. It's, it is definitely more the white, the pith, and then grassy as well. I can tell, by the way, from Peter's face when everyone's, when whoever scores. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even I watching the TV. The I know screen. the TV is literally in front of the computer, but I'm not watching it. But I can tell from Peter's face what's happening. <laughs> well, he, he's he's about he's about the line out. Nothing's happened. I think yeah. I think Peter's probably like five minutes behind everybody. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think so. That's it. I think we're that's we're we're now. Now. I'm not swallowing it with ginger wine. Six nil. <laughs> Sixteen nil <laughs> now. He's winding you up, Peter. Ignore him. We we moved our TV and didn't move the aerial, so we don't have aerial in it. Would anybody like to know what? I'd like yeah. to know, but I can't guess because I'm shit at guessing. I'm I sorry, think, we can't tell you. I think the problem with a lot of these single casts is, that have been finished is a lot of them, uh, they might not be over finished, but it does mask the sort of uh, signature flavour of the distillery it comes from. Yeah. Whether it's sherry, rum, uh, whatever. Uh, so it it is quite difficult to to guess unless you get a peated one. You can generally have a stab at it. it's an oiler. Uh, but apart from that, 
the distillery in them regions are quite sort of difficult to 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 go and let you know the distillery inside out. Yeah. Uh, but this one is actually it's finished in the same cask as the the last one. Is it oh, Madeira? Well? Madeira, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that on there. Yes. All right. Okay. Blair Athol. I was going to say there's like a slight yeah, pink tinge yeah. to the uh, the whiskey itself as well, isn't there? We, I've just thrown ours right across the table. Well done. That'll smell delightful for the next few days then. It's better than licking it off a plastic bag, the way, Dan. <laughs> Honestly, I I was quite I was ashamed of myself because when that arrived and I saw it spill and I thought it's a Monday night or a Tuesday night and I don't drink during the week, but well, unless I'm forced to. But forced. When I opened it, I saw it all through the box, and then I picked up the bubble wrap, and I just found myself <laughs> going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's yeah. criminal. Did you? Yeah, you got the three replacements. Yeah, that's that's the one. You've gone on mute, Dad. Yeah, they're all here. They're oh, that's good. Good. That's good. 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 Yeah, so that was actually 53.2, that one. Right. That's a bit hard to judge, isn't it? So the, the more spiky, because we thought that was re relatively spiky compared with the first, the sorry, the second one. Yeah. Um, And yet it's the same age, same uh, finish, uh, different distillery, obviously, and but it was a lot less ABV. Yeah, I mean that that one was only finished for eleven months, whereas the first one was nineteen. Nineteen, yeah. And maybe the finish has actually done it a world of good. Possibly, like, you don't know. I mean, months. you don't know what they're starting off with, do you? Yeah. So I'm going to open my uh... little bar of chocolate with the next one. Sorry, Louis. I said I'm going to open my little bar of chocolate with the next oh, one. Right. Well, actually, I've just read the notes for this one, so yeah. I think that would be good. It's like, uh, you know, when we did um, Fife last year and Fib Whiskey had nice their like, experimental thing where they had the whiskies before and the whiskies yeah. after. And I mean, for me, the one, the ones they started off with, they should have just left them and not even bothered finishing them because they, they were much better than the actual finished article for me. Yeah, but some of that whiskey was actually pink. Yeah, that's the what I red mean. wine finishes. It was like yeah. they put red wine and whiskey and mix it together. That's one thing. Right. I remember that one. Yeah. I guess I it's thought... so it would change it's wine. Like, I guess it's like when you're an indie bottle, you want to experiment, don't you? I so thought that... it was a really clever idea, and it was dead interesting. I thought mm. that, that red one, that red wine was really nice. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm probably similar to John. I don't think I didn't think any of the um, second product was better than the first. But, but I loved the idea it. of it, and I was dead keen to try them all. Yeah. I don't know if a festival was the right place to do that, because if you were going to do it, you'd want to sit down with it and chew over it a little bit. Maybe, uh -huh. yeah. Maybe it was just the wrong environment to to be uh, putting that out there. It is a shame them. that at a festival you do feel that time constraint, don't you? Whether you like it or not, you you just you, you, so you don't sort of often spend enough time doing the you know uh, some of the particular stands or or really sampling the whiskey properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think without it's a shame you couldn't one, one of them. I can't remember which one it was because it, it was various different distilleries, uh, and I think it was various different wines as well. But one of them was actually murky; you couldn't even see through the bottle. It was. <laughs> And it tasted disgusting, didn't it? Mm -hmm. well, but even some of the ones that taste horrible, like for you, for you not horrible because they're not, because someone clearly liked it, but for your own palate, sometimes it's nice to find out what you don't like mm -hmm. and not just what you do like. Mm -hmm. I remember there being a red wine finish that I just thought tasted of vinegar. And probably red very wine vinegar. Unpolitely, kind of said that, but well, one of also kind kind of said like I was interested to try it. Like you know, it's just one of them things that it's not for you. Was that one of the fib ones? Yeah. Yeah. 
Adam finished in a sarsen's cask. The sarsen's cask. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember the awful Dodger uh, Vina Color finished yeah. in Banner and Banner? Banner. Yeah. Yes. yeah but it was the reverse. But I mean, I fell in love with that at the tasty, and then ever since, I can't drink it because, in my mind, it's just Vina Color with a drop of Banner in it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, my... I mean, you can you can pick bun out of that in a million years. Oh, I'll I'll still love it. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm dirty like that. Well, they've still, they're, 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 they've still got it mind. available, haven't they? That's I mean, that, I guess that shows that it wasn't yeah, as popular it wasn't as I thought. Popular. Oh, I, I didn't know they still had it. I thought they'd sold yeah. out. All yeah, right. Are you all drinking drag number four? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, that was really nice with a square of chocolate. Actually, I'm gonna have the square. Of and chocolate. I think that's maybe a port finish, but not a sweet port. So maybe tawny. I've got right. writing for this one. Sure. They can't read that, man. Have you seen the state of my writing? <laughs> it was too fast. It was too much of a, you know, swirl. I could hold that up to the screen, and he still couldn't write it. Read it. Oh, it's big, isn't it? Jesus. Nice. I like that. Yeah. I didn't look at the uh I couldn't give you tasting notes because other than I think it's maybe hot and maybe tawny. I'm gonna try it with a little bit of chocolate in my mouth. As John said though, the finish is absolutely battering that any distillery character. It could, it could be any distillery almost that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not very good at that stuff anyway, like picking out the actual distillery. I'm crap. Do you think that's why they've gone? Because, I mean, I've never searched. I, I know what I like this distillery character-wise, and that's basically Ben Nevis, Geary, Springbank. So I, know, so I know what I search for for Spirit, but I would never search for a Glen Elgin, a Blair Athol. Mm. Um, it's just not my bag. And I... And I I've enjoyed them, but I wouldn't buy them, like the first three. But do you think that's what they're doing? They're going for those, let's say, cheaper options that people aren't hunting down to bottle? Well, I think a lot of indies go for colour because that's what sells. Um, so the finish means that they can often add that colour in regardless of where it's come from. But I think you're right. You know, It is about the casks that they can get a hold of and typically something like a Glen Elgin is not going to be on people's purchase list. So they've got to make it interesting. So they've got to add a bit of the color in, they've got to add an interesting finish on it, uh, you know, just to get the sale. And, and you know, like they're a business that's, that's yeah. what they do. Because well, like, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't that. necessarily hunt for a Glen Elgin, but I'd hunt for yeah. a Glen Marvin or a Springbank or something. If it was even remotely in your, uh, your price range. But I had the same opinion about Linkwood. That if it was in that kind of uh, middle of the road, you know, didn't really excite me. And then I had that um, little brown dog version. Oh, the, yeah. The cognac car. And I don't think it was a massive finish, but the spirit character on that Linkwood. And now I've bought another three or four different bottles, which I haven't opened. But I hope it's not just a one-off. Otherwise, there, yeah, there'll be an end-of-season sale. <laughs> I felt the same about Tinnanik. I've had a bunch of Tinnaniks that have been absolutely spot on. So I would now possibly watch out for a, a Tinnanik more than I would have any at any time in the past uh, for the same sort of reasons. I had a great, uh, and I've not actually had a bad Tinnanik. So I think it's all down to like individual experience. If you've had a a particular dram from whatever distillery and you you thought oh, that really hits the spot that's that's for me then you'll 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 then look out for it yeah but for me um i mean um we're quite big fans of uh ben rennes <clears throat> uh and i mean i've tried a few from like various different indies in various different finishes but for me the sure. the benchmark is still the flora and fauna. All the all. Because that that is just I mean, I, I was talking to someone and they said the the reason the flora and faunas were brought out was 
they brought him out at that particular age and that particular finish because that was supposed to be as the distillery's thought at the top or the distillery manager. Uh, that was the epitome of their their whiskey at the time. So I think that the the Ben Rennes is something like a sixteen year old, and it's like um, I don't think it's a full maturation, but it's, it's some sort of sherry or some ratio of uh, sherry finished in it. And for me, Shit, sorry, I always, <laughs> I always awesome. compare the any Ben Rennes from any indie to the flora and fauna. And for me, to be honest. I found one that's, or maybe two that have been on par, but nothing that surpassed it. And I mean, it's not even at cash strength. It's at yeah. 43 or 46, I think. Yeah. Well, none of the flora and fauna are at uh, cast strength, are they? No, they did bring nine of them out of the original, I think, was it 22 or 23? Nine of them, they actually released it to cast strength, but I mean, they're like rocking or shite now. You oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It was quite nice to drink it at the top of Ben Rennes as well. Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. yeah. That one's lovely though. I, I'm I, enjoying it, but like you I've said, got, you, you'd never be able to guess the, the 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 original distillery. I have a little bit of information from this one, which I think is right. Is this number yeah, I think four? You'd even struggle with yeah. a lot of them. You'd even struggle with regions, let alone distilleries. You're going to read that in Nelson? Okay. So, it says, Tinternet says, right, seven months, first fill, PX Hogshead. Oh. Maybe it's just because it's only been in there for seven months, but I would have thought a lot of them are only in there for a short time. Well, yeah, a lot more. But that's obviously quite an active task. It says 10 months on the label. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, it might not be the right bottle then. Yeah. The trouble is they, they seem to bottle a lot of the same distilleries with the same finishes. Yeah. Mm. So when you have, whenever you do like an internet search for, for James E.D. specifically, as we found tonight, um, you'll find various different ages, but you'll find like quite a lot of the distilleries repeated and quite a lot of the finishes the yeah. same as mm -hmm. for that distillery. Although there they might be a varying different lengths. Uh, so the only way to find out if you've got the right bottle is checking the cast numbers. I don't have a cast number. Yeah. The bottle that I found anyway, I don't know whether you have got it, but toffee and cocoa. Um, the nose was caramel, spice, hazelnuts and cherries. Uh, oh. uh, the palette was marmalade, toffee, gingerbread, strawberries and shaved cocoa. Nut and the finish was cocoa, strawberry jam, and treacle. Mm. And maybe might have said jam, but I don't think I would have even said strawberry jam. It, Lorraine, none of that might be right. I think <laughs> really you could disregard them because it says for the notes that we found, it says seven months first fill PX, but on the label it, like it says 10. Yeah. So, so it might be a different bottling. Yeah, it could be a different bottle, especially altogether. when it comes to single cask, because you know yourself that uh, everyone's a different beast. So yeah, do, do you want to hear my yeah. note? I think much more plummy, but that's oh, for, for how much it dried my mouth, that was definitely been in there longer than seven months. <laughs> I thought also the nose is a little bit fudgy. It's funny, isn't it? It's like from the colour. I can see where because it's got that sort of like a bit of a I can orange smell fudge. Orange hue hue on it, you sort of immediately go port, isn't it? Because I was like you, and I was a little, little but obviously if you, but then on the taste, it it wasn't. Um, I often find port is really tannic, yeah, um, and really drying, like literally sucks it all the moisture from your mouth. Um, but it was definitely really fudgy, oh. and I thought a touch of milk chocolate and cinnamon on the nose. That's what I got, and then on the palate, dried fruits, licorice, ginger, and fennel. So absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was I quite like that. But I did also add water to it because I thought it was too alcoholic for without water added. The ABV. Yeah, we've just added a drop of water as well. I, I think. think it's 59. Yeah, it's, it's 59 dead. Right. Like that. Mm. Probably the first one I've popped you liked. Yeah. 
Do, oh, you haven't told us the reveal, have you, of what it is? No, not yet. Are you ready for it? Yeah. yeah. This is actually, no, the, uh, this is the youngest one of the bunch. Glenn oh. Spain. Yeah. Don't they put on the uh, the cask number or some sort of yeah the cask numbers here? Yeah. And so, we have so tried to match up quickly the cask numbers with what we're reading, but uh, I'm looking at Master of Malt. I'm looking at all different right. websites. Just I was just trying to do it really quickly, and then obviously I stopped. So the finish is a uh, first fill PX Hogshead. Uh, European oak, 10 months finish. And it's a sherry cask. It doesn't stipulate which sherry. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm guessing Oloroso. Did you not say it was PX? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I expected it to be sweeter, actually. Yeah, when I first tried that, I thought it might have been Oloroso. Uh, yeah, I did too, because it's got that fudge fudge note or especially yeah. on the nose where it didn't seem it seemed too sweet for, for Oloroso when you actually started to really yeah. sort of get into it and also Just I think Oloroso, that Oloroso drawing us to it as well though yeah. yeah it was missing the nuttiness but it had the fudginess so it was quite confusing yeah before mm. you start on number five I'm going to show you the information that I've got for dram number five Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So comprehensive notes then. I can't, I can't. I just can't find it. I can't find it at all. I can't find anything remotely like that bottle. Is I it so from base. their current outrun or whatever? So like recent bottles. But could you go into Whiskey Base and? Yeah, they, they will have it on Whiskey Base. Uh, yeah, so so they just released one in the last couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, like. I think it's an autumn release, but mm. this was obviously prior to that because it was from the festival. So it's not from the latest release, but the one before. It's probably the spring, spring 2023. And the first four, what I could find out is oh. the top thing says sold out. So I don't know whether it's taken off their website when they've sold it all. I There's know. a couple that are sold out on their website now. Yeah. Like stays that they're sold no. out. So. Yeah. So I don't know whether they take it off and then the information is not there. Quite possibly. God, this is quite aggressive on the nose, isn't it? Ooh. Yeah, it is. Alcohol wise, Jesus. Mine not doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, does it have anything at all? What you got on there? No. Oh, it's got a nice mouthfeel. Did you say spit it out? I did. It's quite young, I think, mm -hmm. but it's still, even for a young whiskey, it's still got a nice mouthfeel. It's it's quite I creamy, think so. I think. Yeah, it's got to be over. Yeah. Got to be over ten, though, because I think John said this is the youngest. The youngest, the yeah, yeah, the last one. Well, that's got to be a Kalila. Well, I think it? he might have meant the youngest or far. No, no, that, the last one was the youngest. Uh, out of the oh, five. Right, okay. Sorry, I thought you meant the youngest so far. Good, good spot, Bravo. So that that's got to be Kalila. It's got to be. Not, not. There's not mm. enough peat for Kalila. I don't think. Not on the palate, isn't it? It's like the peat doesn't follow through on the palate no. as much. As it suggests on the nose. Yeah. Kalila is always a good shout because you may not have noticed, but I think every distillery we've had so far has been Diageo. Yeah. So they obviously have a very, a very good route into Diageo, don't they? Yeah. So that's that that invariably is also the the only realistically priced uh, Isla that you can ever get a hold of as an indie now. So it, it probably is a oh, a logical one to go after. Could be Glen Turret or Ardmore, though, couldn't it? I think that's Isla, though. I think there's an element of Isla Pete in there. Yeah, it's it's too thin for it, or too. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I like it, but it, you're right. It, it isn't massively screaming out full on Pete that you would normally expect from a Kalila, but there's definitely enough going on there. Salty. I think it's quite light, Pete, while he's on the nose, mm. if I'm honest. I mean, I mean, that can't be it because it's so long ABV. There's only just like a, really a hint of feet on the nose. I mean, I haven't tasted it yet, but. I think it's more on the palate than on the nose. That's it. That's that bottle there. Is that, that is the right. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Is it there? Okay. I think I found this bottle. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. Whoa. I think it's surprisingly it's massive. Yeah. And mouth filling and juicy no. and chewy. I don't get no. the information. I'm with you, Dan. Totally. Absolutely. No, that is a me. that yeah. is a nice and I'm convinced that's Kalila. It's the right ABV, it's the right mm -hmm. age. It's that's when it was bottled. So these were bottled all I think all of these were bottled in 2022. And I would I would put my neck out and say it's around sort of low to mid like fifty five ABV fifty three and a half. <laughs> really? Oh. I don't think that's I, well. It doesn't feel. It certainly yeah. doesn't feel like it's oh, higher than yeah, that. Yeah, that's it's just. Awesome. It's got a good right. length on it as well. I mean, that's yeah. I think out of all of them so far, they've finished quite quick. This has got yeah. this one you could spend time with. Yeah. So, Rebecca, we're relying on you for tasting those because we can't find anything on the internet. Again, it's sold out. Or anyone else who wants to chuck them in there. Feel free. Add an abnon. Tastes like whiskey <laughs> with a bit of peat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, though, when I first when I first nosed it, um, I thought it was a little bit solventy. And um, and then later on, after nosing, well, after tasting it, it's definitely that that biscuity peat. But also later on, it gets a little bit medicinal as well, like a very small bit medicinal, oh and God. then no. apple at the end. <laughs> That's on the, just the nose. There's lots going on. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. You're right. That's interesting. When you when I smelt it first, that was literally like vapors just burning. But once it's in your mouth and your and your taste buds are used to it, then you smell it again. You get none of that burn because you're already used to that kind of complex. And there's much more fruit. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I actually think it's getting a bit more smoked meaty as well. What was biscuity is now more like smoked meaty. Yeah, that sort of Ladege kind of uh, bacony. Mm. Maybe like smoked ham. It's funny, isn't it? Because like it's one, or something, it's one of those drams that every time you go and have another taste of it, it seems to be different. <laughs> but, you know, it's like uh, I agree with what you said earlier, where it's got a really nice mouthfeel. Yeah. You know, it's not too viscous. It's enough. The smoke's getting stronger the more you sip it. Yeah, spot on that. I think there might be some competition on that bottle. Uh. <laughs> That's what we like to hear, more money for the charity. <laughs> so what, are you, is anyone making any guesses? Is distillery region? Oh, that was guess really um, easy. I'm going to stick with my original easy? assessment. I think it's Kalila. Yeah, I'm with you, Carl, with that one. I'd, I'd go Glen Turret or Ardmore. I don't think it's Isla. Hmm. Age, ABV. 53.5. A little bit higher, I think, but yeah, that's ballpark. And I guess maybe 13-year-old, then, if it's... Yeah, I, I would have said 12, 13-year-old. Right, well... <laughs> 11? Ardmore, would you like? 61.3%. You don't want to catch out, you know. 61. 61. Totally 61. wrong. On, on every count, 61. I was totally 61. wrong. <laughs> but you were right, Steve. Ardmore. I've got Good the year. I was males out on the ABV, though. 
That doesn't drink though like 61%, right? No, definitely not. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I do mm. like the odd moors as well. Like, so I'm surprised that that kind of went under the radar. But yeah. You know. Well, like we're saying though, the flavor profiles maybe not coming out in them quite so well. And it's but, the first non Diageo, isn't it? Ardmore's not uh Ardmore's not Diageo, is it? No. no. Is, there any, is there any cask information on the bottle? Yeah, it's uh, refill of wood, that's it. Mm. So it's yeah, uh, refill brown. That is that the highest peat level of any Ardmore I've tried. There's just nothing. Yeah, that's actually the only the, one. They only peat at the same time. level. Really? I, I found it on in one shop, but it had sold out, so there was just no information. Yeah. At all, other than it's from uh, twenty bottled in twenty twenty two, and I don't even know if that's true. I mean, if you go to James Eady's website, they generally have like um, a back catalogue of all their whiskies. Um, I tried to do it on my phone, but at the moment, all I can find is their their current release. But normally, if you go on, uh, like I say, they have a a, a back catalogue. I think. But did you say it was bottled in 2022? It's, that's what that's well, that, said. That's the only thing that we could find on the internet. If you go, if you go on their website and go to the the whiskies page, you have to choose whether you're looking at cask, finished, small batch, or single cask, and then you can choose the release. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah, give you much. Sure. It doesn't give them very much in, other information on there. Yeah. Probably nothing more say, than what's on the bottle. That's what yeah. I know. <laughs> it was written whiskey and then it would have been sad. <laughs> sorry that we didn't know that we don't know yeah like I said I mean the only information on the bottle is uh, la, la, la. distilled 9 for the 6th 2011 bottled 2022 wood is a refill barrel cast strength that's it you say worth is original barrel <laughs> that would be fun. That would that'd be a good finish, yeah. Was it a single cask or a cask finish? That's a single cask. Single cask twenty-two. You got it, Neil. Um, just on the look. I'll give you the cask number if you want. No, it's a, it 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 doesn't list what them all on one page. You have to like. So a whiskey case would be a good idea to check if uh, yeah. if you've got the cask number there. Ardmore eleven year old cask nine slash one. The trouble is with whiskey base. If you go on there, they don't have official tasting notes. You're just reading. Yeah, everyone know, else's it doesn't give you a huge amount of info. Yeah, yeah. The the website literally literally says distilled 2011, bottle two thousand eleven, bottled to twenty twenty two, cask strength. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all it. I can tell you. Yeah, that's that's all that's all they give you. So sorry. It's your fault, John. <laughs> We're all here for the crack, to... Joanne. Yeah. We're all sorry. here for the crack. I know something about the last one. So we're going on to six. Yeah. yeah well, you mentioned, uh, Rebecca, where you mentioned whiskies that, oh, I don't... that didn't drink like, the, like their ABV. I've got a, it's a signature and thing. So I think it's only 10 years old. Um, but it is it is quite to use a <laughs> to use an, an unwanted phrase quite smooth. <laughs> the, uh, the, the ABV is actually sixty seven point three, I think. Oh, that dangerous then, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is right up there. <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't taste like that. It's not like overly alcohol forward. Yeah. That's got a fruity nose. Has it? Oh, you're not having any of this. <laughs> Name plays lots of tricks on you. Mm. So my first nose of number six, I just said to Carl, I thought it smelled of nail varnish. So I was Ooh. like, oh, it's maybe a grain or maybe like a pure, proper bourbon. And literally in seconds, I've gone, no, it's medicinal. I'm getting the, <laughs> I'm getting the rum banana smell that I love. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking Yeah. I hope Peter's not looking at you. Oof. He's not oh, looking at us. He's looking at his phone. Because that information I've got 
Well, the rest of this one is wrong. Nothing. Not we just said <laughs> we're we'll walking you in, looking it up. No, no, no. I'm messaging pictures of my daughters today. <laughs> Have you actually drunk any whiskeys, Peter? Obviously, so I can't unmute myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm on I'm <laughs> at open number six. Oh, right, seven, okay. Seven more for the answer in Jeremy Soros. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the last two for me are just boy well, scream out something I'd buy. Yeah. That this last yeah. one is delicious. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on the nose, I'm sold. I don't this even know what I think it is. But it is. Ten months finish on it. What finish? Ten months. I'm See, not going to tell you what it is, but it's ten months. See what I could find. Yeah. Give me five. I'm waiting for me five. I'm waiting for me five. I hope so. I'm with Lorraine. That's not great. No. I'm, I'm a James E.D. fan, and I'm, I'm tempted to I'm tempted to put it in the wouldn't go on me chips category. <laughs> uh, I think that that is absolutely delicious. Oh, I like these this one. these are the amazing things about whiskey that there's like us lot round the table all going. Some of us like it. Some of mm. us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I love the nose, but I think it's a bit band aidy and a bit deep heat on the on the palate. I love that. <laughs> That's why I love the Freud. Band-Aid. Never heard someone describe it as Band-Aid, but I get it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to guess it's not as strong. Well, I think that is I'm pretty gonna... strong, you know, Neil. Um, but that might be because I don't like it, that it's just got a much bigger, like, poof. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal the old 53.5. Uh, I'd, <laughs> I'd say that's yeah. more like 58. Yeah. I think it's my favourite distillery. Yeah. Oh my I think it's, it's Ben Nevis. Really? No, 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 no. That's no, definitely it's Peter. Peter. That's got to be... That's Peaty, that is. And it's kind of medicinal, but not full-on Laphroaig, but somewhere oh. in that kind of ballpark. Right, look, Kalila it is. <laughs> 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 and Kalila's Diageo, so you've got every chance. <laughs> But I just don't like it. I wouldn't but, even take another sip, really. Can't see the point. I should drink this all If night. anyone's going to pour the last one out and they don't want it, um, I'm here. I'm I'm available. <laughs> that I improves like in the glass. You might have to bid on the bottle. Mm. Oh, I'm, I think I could bid on that one. Joanne, do you know what's better than this? Do you know what's better than this? <laughs> I like it. I can't believe you even got a bottle of that in the house. It's a, it's me palate cleanser. It's, uh, <laughs> it's cleanser. I've said this before, but Neil, you won't be aware. It goes into this when I'm on Zoom meetings at work, and I'm telling my wife, you know, when you've been in for an hour and you've just had enough of that meeting. I mean, I'd probably be here when you're tasting that. I haven't even tried it, but I'll just. I know it's just not for me, so I haven't even... What did you get on the nose, though, John? I haven't even nosed it. We're going to have a nose, though, how are you? Play the game. It's like Revel Roulette. Oh, and do you know what? All the ones in the Revels that people don't like, I really I like. like. Yeah, I like this. the coffee one. Orange. Was the one that everybody hated. The coffee and the orange are my favourite. Oh. The orange oh. is probably my least, but I'll still eat it. I like everything in a bag of Rebels, which makes it good fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I prefer the old-fashioned minstrels in it, where they haven't got the crispy shell, where they're just smooth. Oh, God, they're so good. Anything so, coated in chocolate. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to actually taste it, but my, my nosy notes, if you like, are... Your nosy notes. Grilled lemons on a peat barbecue. I didn't get lemons like. Mm. The, the nose is pleasant compared to the palate. <laughs> the nose is definitely more pleasant than the palate. Just, just leave now. <laughs> do, do you think this is nicer than the Ardmore? Yes, no. monkey man. I'm going to go back to the Ardmore, clear my palate. Monkey. 
This isn't fair. Carl gets more whiskey than me. No, no, I'm only there's there's enough to No, but I don't like that and I don't like the other one. We've got we've got Rebecca on the tasting tonight, and the best tasting note so far has come from Lorraine, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so it might not be official law. So I think the Ardmore might just pip it from a nosing perspective for me. And I bet James E.D. do want to put on that um, bottle. All their chips. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I have to say, man, when we were on Isla, when we were on with you, John and Joanne, and went to that pizza place and we had those peat smoked chips. Yeah. Pizza, yeah. Them peat like smoked pizza, chips were yeah. so good. I generally mm. thought, oh my God, this is going to be disgusting. But they were it's so just good. The salt. They were really good. I wasn't really sure what to expect, whether it had been like chips sort of rolled in dirt before they threw them in. The <laughs> <laughs> Well, potatoes do come out the ground. Well, yeah, but they're washed and peeled. Yeah. Not in our house. I don't, I don't think there's anything in it between the Ardmore and the yeah. Kalila. Is that what you reckon? <laughs> Did anyone say it was Kalila? Carl was saying it is, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think it is. It is in doubt, I guess, Kalila. Carl guessed somewhere out of five whiskies, four grains, and two Kalilas. <laughs> 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 well, I think th this is a good example of, for, for me of why you know I got into whiskey I disliked it I liked it I loved it and I think that is in a five minute period I think it's just yeah, you know it's got yeah. so much yeah. madness to it that yeah. when we were at the festival and I was doing the tombola two lads came that hadn't been to a festival before and one said to the other, like, I don't know anything about, well, we were just talking. And one said to the other, like, I just, like, you know everything about whiskey and I don't know anything. I don't like all the ones that you like. And my answer was, we don't all fancy the same women now, do we? <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. That's why and, they're all And so one different. could be positive after two minutes or really negative after five. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just... It's some something there for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting stared at now. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, <laughs> the rain face says it all. <laughs> oh, a really fancy <laughs> Jura. <laughs> <laughs> what you like the paps? Oh, yeah. really gets me going. Yeah. Jura can be just described as you've settled. Concrete <laughs> 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 <Honestly> early. <laughs> oh dear. Right. I mean, that's that's why when some people say, "Well, I don't like this distillery, I don't like that distillery," but when you come to single casks, yeah, yeah I mean it's a whole different ball game because the because each individual cask is so different. You can't yeah. say I don't like such and such distillery because it's all down to the wood as well. Uh, I don't like Edradour at all. Bollocks. That's because they made you piss behind the tree. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd pissed <laughs> in the distillery on the floor. I mean, because well, you don't actually like the whiskey. I've never been in the day. You know uh, where? Not Kalina. Loch Lomond. I can't generally get away with their stuff, but I was at yeah. SMWS uh, yeah. tasting recently and I tried one of their peated grains. I think it's called Road to Ro Rod Sue or something like that. Uh, oh, yeah, that the Rod really Sue. Nice. Yeah. Right? Oh. Ross Sue? Yeah. Who, who is the reviewer that does the recycle bin? Have you ever watched that? Uh, Drams. From the, he basically has 30 bottles he's drunk in the last four or five weeks. I can't imagine how he's done it, but... And he finishes them off and then reviews them over a three-minute period. It's a, it's a great watch on YouTube. But he loves the Loch Lomans, and he he reviewed recently Turntable. Don't know if you've had any of those. Oh no, I've seen them on social media, but I haven't never tried any of them. So I, I didn't buy any of those because I looked at the branding. I was like, this is just another you know another fancy label and a blend that's overpriced. And he raved about one of them, and I looked at it. It's just it's blended malts with a, I think it's about ninety percent malts, ten percent grain. 
and I taste I bought this turntable purple haze blend. It is one of those whiskies where you just put it on the side and an hour goes by and you still got let's see pour a 50 mil. And those are the magical ones where you're not, you know, you, you don't want to just fit. spend the time on it. Yeah. And so that he's actually a great watch. I, I've enjoyed everything he's put out. I can't remember his name, but he and plays what's the it same. Recycle. It will no. I'll find it. I'll I'll pop it on the uh, on one of the chats. But he's he's got one of these voices, a bit like Ralphie, that is very, you know, you could sort of fall asleep to it. Yeah, it's a lovely yeah. voice, lovely review. I'm sure that they like the idea that um, they're 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 viewed as a, as a person that you could fall asleep to. Well, you know what? <laughs> I know what you mean. I know. I'm pretty good. <laughs> the thing about this whiskey, so I just go back to this number six. Is it changes constantly? No. Right, I'm, just, just, I'm just going to say that I've just I've only just now tasted some peat on it. No. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? It's because it's because of the Ardmore, though. The Ardmore was quite petered, so I've been munching mm. away on crisps to try and <laughs> like get Stop my nose and mouth focused on something else, and then it and then eventually it goes back to the peat. But I mean, this one, yeah, it has changed a lot because I I got quite a lot of fruit on it um, straight after the Ardmore, like a green apple or apples or something, and the peat was really biscuity. Then it became, <laughs> I was going to say, like almost like smoked fish. A bit like a bit briny. Well, no, not briny. That's not the right word. Uh, more tangy, like I don't know, not quite pickled. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, so like smoked. It reminds me of smoked fish. Now it's gone back to biscuity. But I get coriander seed now. There's the spice in the background. On the nose, or on the nose, yeah. Mm. No coriander. Now, seed. I'm getting quite lemony, kind of, on the part yeah, now, quite lemony. which I didn't get before, which is weird. <laughs> Was it well, like. Yeah, that's why my taste and notes were <laughs> lemons on a peat barbecue. I thought it was quite good, actually. All right, guys, there's a few of you that have been very quiet here. What's what's what like John and Tim? You guys have been quite quiet, even too busy watching the rugby. <laughs> <laughs> like I must admit, I was watching the rugby quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think um, the, the Ardmore was quite nice and it actually tipped it for me above the Kalila. I thought the... The Kalila? Yeah, no, that what? this was Kalila. What? No one said this was Kalila, did they? Oh, oh with Carl. 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 Oh, it must be. It must be. You just make such great assumptions. Yeah, that's why I'm quiet. Because I don't know what's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Had you finished there, Tim? Sorry, before you were rudely interrupted from saying Kalila. All right. Um, the PX was too much for me. It was too PXy. Oh. Um, and the other ones were a bit. Uh, Bit too spiky, a couple of them. Mm. Um, I thought the blend was quite pleasant for the blend, mm. but uh, I, w I wasn't really overly impressed. Okay. Sorry. With any of them? Did you not like any of them, Tim? I liked them, but I was never going to go, wow, I, I must have that bottle or anything like that. That means that some of us have got a chance of winning a bottle in the auction. <laughs> Don't feel pressured, Tim. Do you not like any of these? No, no, I thought they were nice, pleasant whiskies, but I, I wouldn't go, oh, I must get a bottle of that one. That's fantastic. Yeah. I must admit, though, um, uh, Joe, like this one, I actually, you know when you go to the Freud and you get your rent? Yeah. I, I cracked that bottle open and I thought, my God, that's a really good dram. Yeah. It's yeah. an absolute belter of a dram. Yeah. yeah. The 10-year-old the McCoy yeah. is absolutely spot on. Yeah. It just really shocked me how good it was. Yeah. Do that one as well, then. Yeah. I, I want to try and do another. You know, when we did the 
the, the single Lefroy cast one. Lefroy's, they were absolutely that, bloody That stunning. cost me a lot of money, Carl, yeah. that tasting. <laughs> well, I'd like to do another one. I'm going to try and see if I can get another one organised for early in the new year. Another one, what? Yeah. Lefroy. Oh, that that was definitely is that the one with Caroline because that was the oh, that was yeah. basically my tasting of the year I think. Yeah. <laughs> warehouse Me ten, the warehouse amazing. ten was just yeah. I had to chase it down across numerous auctions, numerous <laughs> months, and I got it, and it oh yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I think there's something really special about what Lefroy do because whether you like it or not, it is such a unique uh, spirit. It's just incredible. I quite like the fact that Caroline's my friend and she keeps giving me bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I give them the <laughs> Hello, baby. Hello. Definitely next year's new ass trip is going to be uh, doing the same as what we did the previous year, which was uh, doing Campbelltown for a couple of nights and then Isla. It was just Ooh. spot on. Where if you're thinking of going, let us know what the dates are, because we'll probably tag along for some of it, not all of it. We'll come along, camp. It is yeah. a bit of a cheat, because actually the the original New Ass uh, trips were actually before New Ass were formed, and it mm. was actually arranged oh. by my dad and his mates, and it was always a man-only thing. So since yeah, then, so so since then, it's kind of been the same. We've kind of kept it as a purely male domain, but actually, I think you know it is a bit off, really, isn't it? In this day and age, we should be uh, we, Lorraine. I keep saying you should come along. What with all the men? Well, yes, yeah, but well, it, I'll be there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie's just like Becca's basically like a man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe I need to get two minibuses. Carl, <laughs> Carl, you should meet my HR department. I think you'd go down quite well. And the diversity and inclusion department. And, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, yeah. and the do no work department. They're all so good. <laughs> I'd have had a lot more respect for you, Carl, if you'd stuck to that just for a couple of minutes. <laughs> just to see the shock and horror and then started laughing about it. <laughs> I'll try again yeah. harder next time. I'm pretty sure anyway, it's recorded. So I, it's, it's been recorded, <laughs> so you can definitely edit it out. <laughs> I am not going to be bothered to edit out stuff from the main no. bit. No way. Cannot be if you look back at any, any of the YouTube recordings, none of them have been edited. <laughs> no, I just cut the beginning and end. Like I start it at the beginning when we actually start tasting and then I crop it before I cut it before um you know when we have just did, general not, did one not have to be entirely deleted because of something I said though. Probably. <laughs> Probably, Probably yeah. more than one. Was that oh, actually, there was, was there that was, yeah. It's, there it there was one. one that had to be completely deleted. Well, there was one that, that had a put, rant. I think there wasn't, yeah, we didn't put it live, but it's on private on the YouTube channel. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's not ava publicly available, that one, yeah. <laughs> I decided to give some little political views out of holes myself. <laughs> <laughs> and volume. Let's move on quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we haven't had the reveal yet oh, for yeah. the mystics. Let's find so, out. So, Leela. So, Leela. Are we going for region or region or straight to distillery, Tim? I mean, so I was going to go for region, an Ardbeg. Ardbeg? Ollie's going for Ardbeg. But I've kind Ooh. of moved more to Lefroy. I mean, it started off more Ardbeg, but I, I kind of think it's a Lefroy now. Nice one. Well, there we go. Uh, so, Isla's the region. Right. Distillery, ABV, finish, anything along those lines? I'd, I'd say early 50s. Hard, isn't it? Because your palate just starts to diminish. So it's <clears> and I'd say it's relatively shape. young. I'd say, again, you know, maybe 12, 13 year old tops. As a guess, twelve. Dusk. I had thought sherry, but like not very active. Only because on the palate, I got dried fruits and crystallized ginger, which are kind of more things that I get with sherry. 
but I don't know. Did you give a hint, John, that there was a finish on this one? Yeah, it was. I did say it was ten months. Yeah, so there was yeah. a finish on it. I would, I would go rum, some kind of rum finish. Twelve, thirteen year old, and I said fifty three percent, fifty three and a half. Right. Well, it is actually. You were right in the distillery. <laughs> What's the ABV? It is fifty-eight point one. No, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't feel that. And it's Palo Cortado. Ah, okay. see, I don't think it's had a big influence. The Palo Cortado. Well, I, I did look this one up, and it said it was nine months European oak. Hilo Cartado, Sherry Hogshead. That's all I got. But the one I looked at had a different ABV. So I don't know if it's the Did same we... bottle. No, it's not. I don't think it can be. Well, it can no. be. Yeah. It's 10 months finished. Because again, yeah. James Eady have done a, a few Kale um, Kalilas. And I'm pretty sure we had an older uh, Palo Cartado finished uh, Kalila. We've had one of these before. Would anybody like to get do that bottle A? Because someone mentioned liking or not liking this particular distillery. And we said nothing, but it is in actual bottle A. <laughs> if you have a bottle A. Yeah, I have a bottle A, but I don't have any clean glasses. <laughs> Ollie would need to go and get... Yeah, is it petered though? Because if it's not petered, I'm not going to taste anything. Um, no, it's not. No. Yeah, no, it'd be really difficult because obviously the palate is shot a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the ABC were obviously we had just sort of the dregs of bottles really. That's why the, the number I of tasting sets were limited. I don't want to know what they are because we will do them probably, I guess maybe tomorrow we'll do them. Do we do them as ABC? Is that the order? ABC, yeah. It's up to you, really. I mean, we just bottled them as ABC because they were extra drums. Okay. Um, are any of them petered? No, none of them are. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll just message you when I want to know what they are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll do the same. I mean, yeah, there are there are a few of you that have got the nine drum sets, but not everyone on the tasting. Unless, I mean, I know unless Steve, Steve, you didn't get a nine set. Carl, you didn't get a nine Neil set. And Neil didn't either. I've got one. Um, <laughs> but actually, Steve, we have. I have got some left. Uh, so I can give you like some drums. Yes. And Carl, Carl and Ray, you're coming round for a, a cat and night anyway, so we can. We can share the dregs of a bottle there. It is with dregs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because it is literally, we, I think we only put 10 sets available. Yeah. Uh, leaving like a tiny little bit for any sort of mishaps. Yeah, any mishaps like Dan had. <laughs> uh, so we could like replace any any yeah. missing bottles. Um, so, I mean, it is literally the dregs of a bottle. And I can I suggest, by the way, just to go off a bit off topic, is to go and smell number two again if you've got any dregs in your glass because now it really does smell like the oh. um i've just finished off number two and it's fantastic now i know <laughs> it's really <laughs> like um, you know amazing how they taste you know after you nine extra of, ones yeah <laughs> you know when you said panettone i didn't get that at all the first time i had it but now I don't like, get that now but it's just it is very ice and sugary it's very sweet but it's a little bit spicy yeah, like sweet fruit lovely, bread, lovely. right? Like Christmas fruit bread. Straight away. That's lovely, the nose. Mm -hmm. Possibly. You can make you like something like... Well, tonka beans. Oh, can you? Maybe even something like apricot and something else. I'm sure that's 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 gorgeous. That's Actually, four, if you go back to four, even if you've got an empty glass, have a nose of four. Is that the organ? Oh, okay. Yeah, number two. The um that number two, mm. um, and I think it is the right bottle for that one. It did say apricot jam, and that was from James Eady. Yeah, part of the official tasting. 
What baby? You've already given you a treat. I'm gonna head off, guys. Um, thank you, got thank you for organising. I'm gonna watch the rugby. So. <laughs> Join the I made the last of this long. Peter. Yeah. Peter. Peter. No, seriously, the nose number. I've just poured a bit of number two again, and I am totally in love with this. Nose is that gorgeous. is good, isn't it? Well, actually, we didn't. The Peter's left. The actual numbers for the uh, impromptu auction are getting better for you, lot. Should we start? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's even better have, for like, me. Some because... sort of vote for for which one was the favourite. Uh, is it worth doing oh. it? Oh. Yeah. We can yeah. do that. Well, it's obviously not number six or five, so. Uh, excuse me, just speak yourself. <laughs> I think for Ollie, it was four and four, four and there's a five and six, but for me, I going think... back to two, I really like two and five. Two and six five. for me. Number six for me, yeah. Six and two for me as well. Hmm. Yeah. 